everyone. I'm here with a Bible reading. I hope you're having a good day. Um, let's start off with our prayer requests. Please keep the following people in prayer. Luke Boggs and his mom Bridget. Joyce Light. Sherm. Sherm's in a lot of pain today. Um, Rhonda Karshner. Cindy and Jim. Dora Carper. Danette Rager. Layla and her son Emil. Bonnie Jean. Elizabeth Jeffries and her grandson Dominic. Abby and Liam and Jimmy Myers. All right, is it doing okay so far? I didn't see anybody write anything about the poems, if you guys are enjoying them or not. So I'm gonna keep going till I run out of them. And um, so I think I'll read one for today. Okay, this one is called Remember Me. And this one is good for like a funeral or if somebody's lost someone they love, I'd use poems similar to this. And it's helped to help people to deal with it. Like, you know, the one that's like, do not stand at my, ground, my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. You know, it, re it really touched that person, that poem, thinking, oh yeah, they're in heaven. They're not really in that body. They're not really in the ground, you know? So you never know. I share and stuff with people like this. But this one's called Remember Me. Don't remember me with sadness. Don't remember me with tears. Remember all the laughter we have shared throughout the years. Now I am contented that my life, it was worthwhile, knowing that I passed along the way and I made somebody smile. When you are walking down the street and you have got me on your mind, I'm walking in your footsteps only half a step behind. So please don't be unhappy just because I'm out of sight. Remember that I'm with you each morning, noon, and night. And that's true. You will see your loved one again. Can you imagine when we go to heaven what it's going to be like? It's going to be the best there ever. You can, it's better than you can even imagine. Okay? When you get to heaven, it'll be like when you picture God standing there, Jesus standing there, somebody's been waiting on you. And you see your pets. God goes like this, and you start seeing all your family members that have already passed, that you haven't seen in years, start coming into view, and everybody's there like a big family reunion, you know? And everybody's healthy and happy, no more tears or pain or fighting. It'll be a great, great time, but only when God calls you home because you're here on this earth for a reason. God put you here for a reason, every single one of you. He's got a job for you to do that he only wants you to do. He needs you to do this job, and you don't know what it is, but he does. And when you've done what he's had you here to do, then he will call you home. Bring as many souls as you can to the Lord while you're here. That's the best thing you can do for anybody is bring their soul to Jesus. There's, your souls are eternal. Man can kill our bodies, but our soul will then for eternity either go to heaven or to hell. And that is 100% your choice. Nobody else's. God and Jesus gave us this choice. We never had the choice before. They gave us the choice now to be saved through Jesus. So we as God's children can go to heaven and live with them for eternity. And that's, nobody can make that decision for you and only you can make that decision. So it's really your fault if you don't get into heaven because if you're not on God's side, you're on Satan's side. If you're not on God's side, you're on Satan's side. This one is called Letting Go, and it is by Barbara D. McAdam. Forgive me, Lord, for these thy gifts were taken quite for granted. My harvest could have been so full if seeds of faith I'd planted. Instead, I spent time wishing for the things I hadn't lost. 
when all the while you held from me more blessings at no cost. You waited oh so patiently for me to just let go, so there'd be room within my heart to fill your blessings flow. I never thought I'd say it, Lord, but thank you for this storm. It brought me to my knees in prayer where hope and faith were born. Amen. God saying, let go of all this. Let go of it. Give it to me. Let me take care of it. Trust me. Trust me. What does Jesus say? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Give it to the Lord. He can handle it. Okay, this one's called Why Me? And I always like the saying, you can't have a rainbow without a little rain. Remember that. We have to go through hard times sometimes because we have to learn a certain lesson from those hard times. It's not good when you're going through the hard time. I know it's not for me. I get into real deep, dark depression sometimes and it's not good. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. And but sometimes we have to go through those things to learn. And other times it's the devil making you go through them things because the devil's like laughing at God and saying, well, of course uh, they worship you because you have had them a happy life and they got all this nice stuff and blah, blah, blah. If you took this away, they'd turn against you and come to me. So you go through a test. Don't let Satan win. Don't let him win because the rough time will not last forever. Some are shorter than others, some are longer than others, but the tough times will eventually pass. And I need to always remind myself of that as well. I know it's hard though when you're in that moment. It's very hard. But we need to try to remember that. Let go and let God. If you have to ask, why me, when you are feeling really blue, when the world has turned against you and you don't know what to do, when it pours colossal raindrops and the road's a winding mess and you are feeling more confused than you ever could express, when the saddened sun won't shine, when the stars will not align, when you'd rather be inside your bed the covers pulled above your head. When life is something that you dread and you have to ask, why me? Then when the world seems right and true, when the rain has left a gentle dew, when you feel happy being you, please ask yourself, why me then too? See, and that's a good one to remember. We're always, when something bad happens, we're like, why me? Why is this always got to happen to me? It should happen to this person or whatever because I try to be good and do all this and bad, everything bad happens to me and they're a bad person and everything good happens to them. It's not fair. But when good things happen to us, do we say, why me, God? Why did you let this amazing thing happen to me and not so-and-so? We forget to thank God for the blessings when we're having the good times but we always cry out when we're having the bad. All right, and the last one I'm gonna to read today is called Don't Quit, and it is by John Greenleaf Whittier. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is strange with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure comes about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up though, the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned upside down. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint 
of the clouds of doubt, and you never can tell just how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far, so stick to the fight when you are hardest hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not quit. For all the sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are, it might have been. And all the regrets. I wish I would have done that. I can't do this. Uh, it might have been, it might have happened this way. It might have been a good thing. It might have turned out bad. It might have turned out great. <clears throat> we only have one life, but the best thing you can do on this earth is to bring as many souls to Jesus as you can while you're here. Teach your kids about the Lord. Because like I always say, if you don't, the world will teach them not to. They're trying to take God out of everything. Look how much they've taken him out of already. It's, it's just sad. It's sad. And if you don't teach your kids about Jesus, how are they going to learn? You teach your kid about Jesus when they're little and they turn away. God always says, God said that if you raise a child up in the way you should go when they are older, they will return to it. Because, you know, they'll rebel. Some, especially teenagers, rebel and go wild. But later on, they'll come back to the way you raised them up to be. And, you know, hopefully it'll be before God calls them home. The best thing you can do for your child is teach them about the Lord. The best thing you can do. All right, guys. So today we're going to be reading <clears throat> Acts chapter 13, verse 42 through chapter 14, verse 7, Psalm 139, and Proverbs chapter 17, verses 19 through 21. Sorry, my mouth's getting dry. Okay. Now, it ended yesterday with Paul. Um, he was talking to the people in the synagogue. Okay. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, we had to speak the word of God to you first, since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. We now turn to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And what did Jesus tell Paul, who was Saul? He told him that he wanted him to be his apostle to the Gentiles. So Paul is known as the apostle to the Gentiles. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region, but the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city they stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. Of course, look what they done to Jesus. They don't want people thinking they killed the Son of God, which they did. And I always think of this, can you imagine? This is going to be the same way with people who are not saved when, when you die. Because you could, you're not, not everybody has a deathbed. And my youngest sister believes that. I'll ask for forgiveness on my deathbed. And it infuriates me when people say that. Somebody could come in and shoot you right now. You could be in a high-speed car accident and die. You could drop dead of a heart attack. You don't know. Jesus could come back right now. And you've got to be ready. 
because you don't always have a deathbed. All right, so they're stirring, they're stirring the pot here, the Jewish leaders. They always want the people to listen to them and nobody else. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Because you remember, um, Jesus told them, if you shake the dust off your feet from a town who, you know, don't want to hear your word or whatever, then it'll be worse for that town. It'll be worse for that place than it was for Sodom and Gomorrah at the end days. <clears throat> so, that was bad. And Jesus also said, if you forgive somebody, they will be forgiven. If you don't, then they won't. Ask what you want in my name. Ask anything in my name. And you'll receive it. So God gave, you know, the disciples. Made them able to heal people and, you know, do things to prove what they were saying. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. The Greeks are mentioned several times. They must have been a lot of them there. Greeks, Samaritans, Gentiles, Jews. Because you see the Greeks um, talking about them turning up, turning to God a lot. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of His grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. Now it's calling Paul and Barnabas brothers, but I want you to know they weren't blood brothers. They were, you know, brothers in Christ. Like we are brothers and sisters in Christ, the ones of us who are Christians. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews others with the apostles. There was a plot afoot among both Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and to stone them, Paul and Barnabas. But they found out about it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the gospel. <laughs> and see, you think uh, they got scared because they were going to stone them? They've been flogged, they've been imprisoned. People, they're always wanting to kill them. But do they stop preaching the word of God? No, they continue on. When they got released out of prison, remember when Peter and them got out? They said, don't speak the name of Jesus anymore. As soon as they got out, he was doing it. Because they know, they were with Jesus. And Saul, when Paul, when he was Saul, Jesus appeared to him. Okay, and they know that it is true that Jesus is the son of God. They witness with their own eyes. So they know all these people can do is kill me. And the Lord's not calling us home till it's our time to go. And we know when something happens to us, our soul is immediately going to be with the Lord in paradise. So, and a lot of the disciples later in life, when they were old, got killed, including Peter, who was crucified. He was crucified upside down because he, you know, didn't want to compare himself to Jesus, you know, being regular crucified. So he asked to be crucified upside down, and he was. Okay. And Stephen, remember poor Stephen who was stoned to death? Yep, but they knew. They knew. All right, guys, Psalm 139. For the director of music of David, a song. And this is a very, very beautiful psalm. I love this psalm too. Which I think they all are, but it's a good one. Let me see if the camera's still recording here real quick. Be good? 1945. Yeah, but is it still recording? Okay. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. 
You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book, the book of life, before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Now wasn't that a beautiful song? Psalm 139, the director of music of David, a psalm. Okay, guys, in ending today's Bible reading, we have Proverbs chapter 17, verses 19 through 21. Whoever loves a quarrel loves sin. Whoever builds a high gate invites destruction. One whose heart is corrupt does not prosper. One whose tongue is perverse falls into trouble. To have a fool for a child brings grief. There is no joy for the parent of a godless fool. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.